All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing slightly different project from the ones we had before, and I have quite a few electronic pieces that I would like to fix. Uh, and today we will be working with the Surface Pro, uh, Microsoft Surface Pro tablet. I believe that's version four, so Surface Pro four. And the problem what we have here is that it's not very uncommon, but I don't know if you can see it here. The screen is bulging quite severely. I don't know if you can see it. It's not flat and it's delaminating on this left side quite substantial. As you can see, there's a, almost as thick as the tablet itself. So the screen is bent, uh, but it's working fine. Uh, obviously that's not how it's supposed to work. So we'll need to fix that. Yeah, you can basically see everything what's inside the tablet. So the problem with the bulging of surfaces and actually quite similar to many other electronic devices uh, like cell phones is the battery inside. Uh, the battery inside goes bad uh, over time and it, it expands. And because there is obviously not much space in there, uh, the space is very tight. Uh, there's no nowhere to go, so it actually pushes out the screen out usually, uh, even though the screen is glued, and that's the cause for delamination. So depending on what stronger screen or the glue, uh, it could lead to several things. The well screen can delaminate like that, like what we have here, or uh, and or the the screen can crack. That also can happen, and then you have to replace the whole screen. So right now the screen is not cracked well, yet. So we are not done with that yet. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, so ideally we only need to replace the battery. So in order to do that, we need to completely detach the screen, look what's inside and uh, well, replace the battery obviously. And while we're there, because well, we are uh, detaching the screen anyway, might as well do uh, an upgrade to an SSD. Well, I mean, there's already an SSD, but I think this one is 128 gig or something like that. So uh, relatively small by today's standard. So I'm thinking about upgrading to 256 or maybe 512 even uh, while we're there anyway. So, but we'll see if we can get to that part. Uh, first things first, uh, we need to detach the screen. In order to do that, uh, we need to hit, well, there are several ways how you can do that. Generally speaking, you need to uh, heat up the adhesive so it well, either liquefies or at least softens a little bit. Uh, and then you can cut it out all over the around with the pick uh, or something. Uh, and there are several ways how you can heat it up. You can use the hot plate. So basically, you put it on a plate like that. It heats the whole device uh, and then you work with the adhesive, and not necessarily ideal, uh, it's easy, uh, relatively fast, you don't need to uh, do any much, but it hits the whole device and that's not really necessary. Uh, or you can do more localized heating with the hot air, uh, usually solution of sorts. The cheapest one would be obviously uh, the hair dryer. I mean, people have done that, not, not the best. Uh, you could do the heat gun, or you can do even hot air uh, uh, soldering station or rework station. And that's what I have here. Uh, I can show it up like this one, uh, probably one of the cheapest ones. Uh, but hey, like, I mean, the thing is that all it does is regulating the airflow and regulating air temperature relatively precisely, I mean, better than the heat gun, and certainly better than the hair dryer because you generally don't even select the temperature. And the thing with the taking off the screen is you don't want to heat too much because that may uh, actually damage the screen. Usually that's the first thing to go if you overheat it. But if you underheat it and you try to pry too much, then you're likely to crack the screen. So you really have to be in the sweet spot here. So what I'm gonna try to do is to use the, that's the gun of the hotter station, to heat 
very locally the parts that I want to cut and go slowly because I really don't want to break the screen. It may still happen, but ideally I prefer not to. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's get started. Right, before we go there, uh, I marked with tape here, I mean, fairly crude, but just to show you. So these are the most dangerous areas where you have to be extra careful. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, and yeah, that's the top. So that's the left side, that's the right side, that's the bottom. Uh, here you would have uh, connectors to the screen very close to the edge. So if you pry too much uh, and cut uh, them, well, that's, that's a game over. You basically have to replace either the screen or at least the cables. And at the top, most of the top part, uh, like both on the left and the right, fairly big chunks here are effectively antennas. And yeah, they go very close to, uh, to the screen uh, and there's a lot of adhesive here. So we have to be extra careful. In other areas, it's not as critical as long as you don't push the screen too much uh, as to crack it. But here you have to be very, very careful. All right, and here's our hot air gun. I'm trying to use as little heat as I can. All right, and I think we passed the corner. Corners are the trickiest parts, obviously, because these are the usually the weakest part of the glass. And now we are actually at the cutout and the corner as well. So that is very tricky part. So we need to make sure we hit it well, but not to overheat. So we turned the corner there as well, and now it's the top part. We'll need to take care of, remember, lots of 
antennas right at the top so we have to be really careful here We're done. So the screen seems to be detachable now, right? Okay, we need to make sure we don't damage the cables. All right, so in order to disconnect the screen, we need to remove these two cables. And first, we need to remove this EM shield, which apparently is a relatively tricky proposition. So, right, so it's moving. All right, I think it's mostly intact. We'll need to bend it back when reinstalling, but I think it looks fine. Well, we can disconnect that cable now. Yep. All right, now. All right, there we go. This one looks even better. There we go. So, yep. The screen is out. The battery is extremely bloated. Actually, just one cell. This cell is fine. This cell is bloated. I think it's actually bending the head sink even. Now we need to disassemble the rest of the components on the board. Uh, there are ways to uh, replace the battery without um, taking out the motherboard and a whole bunch of other components. But they're a bit sketchy. Uh, there's a good chance that you may short some components on the board because the battery is still attached. So we're not going to do that. And especially considering that, hey, like, that's an excellent opportunity for us to find out how the whole thing is assembled. So we're going to just assemble most of the components here to get to the battery, replace the battery, and assemble it all back together and replace the SSD. So that's the plan. Uh, let's get going. All right, first order of business, we need to remove the antenna bracket, support bracket right on top. And that's that. That's the antenna bracket.
And there we go. Now we need to unscrew the heatsink at the bottom. That would be very shiny. All right, now that's where this uh, surface is different from i5 and i7 models. So i5 and i7 models have actually a fan with a small flat fan attached to the uh, heat pipe here. But the M3 models do not have that. They're passively cooled completely. So we'll just need to unscrew, I guess, that part. Yeah, this part is not attached anymore. And now we'll need to go through the CPU heat sink right here. There we go. All right, so that's the whole heatsink assembly is off. Uh, we'll need to replace the thermal paste when we're going to be reattaching it. We'll probably need to, I think it's pretty flat. Yeah, I don't think we'll even need to bend it back. Another EM shield. This time, that's the one protecting the camera connectors, so right here. Alright, this one did not want to cooperate quite, but we got it done. Now the camera connectors. Let's see. That's one. That's two. And that's three. Now there's another tiny connector here for power and volume buttons. Disconnected. Then another one is for the speaker. That's the speaker assembly. That's the connector for the speaker. There we go. Let's connect her out. All right, there's another one is right here. I think that's the headphones. All right, out. All right, now we need to detach another EM shield, which is this one. done. So now we need to disconnect that cable that's from the SD card reader. All 
And now we have access to the another shield, which we'll need to remove. That's covering the power connector. Okay, first, there's a bracket here. There we go. Now we need to push the connector out of the socket. All right, and the connector is out. Now we need to go back to the CPU area and you'll need another speaker connector which is that's and it's out. And do the similar operation on the that connector as we did on the other side. Yep, done. All right, I think now we disconnected most of the connectors that we cared about. So time to do a whole lot more screws. Now, not all screws here are actually the same. So the ones that we removed are all the same. Uh, but now this one. And that one. different and then there is another one which is different which is this one. we still need to remove the right speaker now we need to take it out like so and now we should be able to take out the motherboard finally let's see if that works and there we go the motherboard is out. Excellent. That would make things a lot easier. All right, so now for the battery removal, uh, might be a bit tricky. So there's a lot of the, basically the whole backside of the battery is covered in adhesive. So that's, that's tough. Um, you may want to heat it up a little bit, but you have to be really careful with these batteries. Uh, I'm really hesitant to do that with the battery in that kind of condition, as you may see, yeah. So I'll try to do no heat if I can, and we'll see how that goes. So the weapon of choice would be isopropyl alcohol, 99. 
Uh, and yeah, I'll just put it into the bottle like that. I'll try to drip a little bit to the places where I want it to soften. And then we'll see if I can cut it with either the plastic sponger or actually dental floss. So we'll, we'll see if that works. All right, and that connector is all done. Actually, now we can apply some tape here. Just in case. Yeah, I don't remember if I mentioned before, but before working on the battery, uh, and especially a battery like that, which is clearly compromised, uh, you may want to discharge as much as you can the device if it was still operational, which I did. Uh, also, wear eye protection when working with the screen and with the battery for different reasons. Well, the screen can shatter easily and yeah, you don't want glass shrapnel in your eyes. Uh, if you puncture the battery, like you have toxic fumes, potential fire and so on and so forth, so yeah. Protective equipment, important. Try not to use metal tools while working with the battery, because again, puncturing that is not a good idea. All right, here is a quick progress update. So the things are going actually quite nicely. As you can see, there's quite significant gap already. There's still a bit of adhesive there, but alcohol works really well. So that, that's, remember, that's with no heat. And look at that. So the The broken part, well, the bloated part of the battery a pack is out, so it's disconnected. Look, look at how, how clean it is. Like no adhesive is on the battery, it's all left there. And you can tell, yeah, that's like, I can see like softened adhesive, it's still a little bit sticky, but that's all alcohol work. And we're almost there. You can see. You can hear that the adhesive is actually just peeling off. It's like cracking a little bit. And it sounds like it's almost the yeah. There you go. Again, clean out. Not cut adhesive, or adhesive is there. Nothing is on the battery. All right, and let's take a look at the new battery. So here's the new battery. And compare it with the one we just removed. Like, look at that. Yeah. That was not good. So now, in order to install a new one, uh, we're going to use the adhesive, what was still here. We don't want it to be too sticky because in case well, we want to uh, replace it again. So here's our connector. And we'll just put thin strips at the back like so. And the second one. And let's put it back. I need to make sure we align with the pin. Yeah, as you can see, it's not falling off. 
and that's better installed. So now, of course, the tricky part is put it all back together and make sure that it all still works. Need to take out the insulation, but we'll need to add some temporary one, like a piece of paper or something. Uh, so when we are putting in the motherboard, we don't mess up anything. All right, that should do. Just a piece of paper right there. Right, I think now it is aligned. So it's important to align the battery connectors with the motherboard so you can short circuit it. And all right, so motherboard seems to be in place. Now it's time to screw in and reconnect everything. Let's get started. Back to the heat shield. But first, we need to do some cleanup work. So, we move some old thermal paste from the CPU and from the heat sink itself. Okay, that's just alcohol again.
Okay, cleaning the bracket, of course, was entirely unnecessary, just for for cosmetic purposes. The important part is the the top, as you can see. It's a mirror finish. Uh, so perfect. So now we have to do the same. The heat sink. Yeah, look at those chunks. This thermal paste was not doing that much recently. All right, mirror finish here as well. Let's put it on. All right, done. All right, and we were able to use all the screws that we had and didn't have any screws missing. Still didn't forget about the SSD replacement. So SSD is actually under this. And that's done. So here's our original SSD. Just one screw here. And it's up. Here's what we're going to replace it with. The Samsung 980 Pro uh, 250. And it's in. And let's put the screw back. And that's that. I'm going to reuse the adhesive as much as I can because this the adhesive on the case, uh, the one that I kept, is fine, it's flat, uh, it's good. I don't want it to be super sticky anyway, so that's fine. Uh, there are several places where I had to scrape it because it wasn't good and when it's on top. And that's why I'm going to reapply, or apply rather, uh, double-sided tape. So I did pre-cut a few pieces of the double-sided tape and we're gonna apply it to the edge.
and that should be fine for our tape application. Now we're going to reconnect the screen. Let's make sure we're still live. Yep. All right, let's glue this. We just need to remove the backing tape from the tape that we just added. Now I'm just using the plastic card to make sure that we are not adhering just yet. Need to make sure that the alignment is just perfect. So this side seems to be fine. The important part they need to fit into the corners. And let's do this one. Like so. All right, so the screen is in, just to put some weight on top. But we may also want to heat it up a little bit just so it sticks again. I don't want to have super strong adhesion here in case I need to reopen this again. I'm going to heat it up just a little bit and also have these nifty uh, screen clamps. So it's usually good for corners or sometimes just other edges if they're not flat, but I mean it looks good so far. Yeah, just checking the screen for flatness. Yep, flat. Definitely not how it used to be bulging like that. And that's that. I'll just turn turn again. Yep. Battery is right there. You can see. Uh, screen is working. Uh, the drive is working. Clearly, I. I cloned it from the old drive, that's where you see already a startup screen. And uh, that's great. Mission success. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know what I did right, wrong. I'll probably upload the extended version to our sister channel, JMI Works. Uh, that's usually where I put stuff which is longer, not everyone wants to watch longer videos. Uh, but there are a lot more detail in there, so if you actually want to follow step by step, if you want to do that, or just um, find more information or find more entertaining, uh, check it out there. Uh, and with that, uh, happy to hear any comments. Good, bad, hopefully good, and I'll see you next time.